and I'm only just starting to appreciate the fact that 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 creativity, that sort of uniqueness, is is my is my skill. That's my unique. That's my niche. At first, it's very much uh, oh, what the hell is going on over there, and people sort of scrutinise it much more because they don't understand what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, now it's much more expected. Um, it doesn't even have to be crazy. It just I guarantee it will not be the same crap that everyone else is putting out. Though that's the problem I've got right now is that everyone is just doing the same old kind. Even the brands with massive budgets are just doing the same type of boring shit. How are you? I'm good. Joe, you know I'm not even gonna give you. I'm not even gonna give you an intro. I've got something to address with you. All right. Okay. What's that about? Oh <laughs> yeah. Do you know what that is? It's what you wrote something on Twitter, what, uh, LinkedIn. Is it? I mean, tweets video. Yeah, and then you. I said. Do you know what though? If no, I but say it was actually this, relevant at the time. To if, be th- if you think about it, because you were actually just not doing work. <laughs> you were. <laughs> Do you know what though? If I read that in my accent, HM staffing more like HM faffing, it doesn't really make sense. What was it? No, no. What? Oh yeah. But well, no, because I would say HM staffing like HM faffing. See. So when I read that out, I had to do it in your voice. What did you go, HM staffing? Like, I was HM like, yeah, farfing. H- HM well, well, okay, then next question. Why is it farfing, not farfing? Faffing, staffing. Oh, yeah. So well, that's why I did it in your voice. I was like, yeah. Well, no, let's go through this. So if it had <laughs> S-T-A-R-F-F-I, that's, starfing. It's, star- it's staffing. How is it staffing? Because that's what it is. <laughs> it's, it's HM staffing. But if I had to do it in your accent to make it rhyme, HM staffing, more like HM faffing. Yeah. And it was relevant to the point. You, was giving, you were doing mean tweets. You weren't doing any work for the day. And I thought, well, it looks like they're just faffing. <laughs> we, so we, do you know what? How's it not got any likes? Well, because it's an inside joke, if anything. <laughs> no, no one else that follows you is going to be there like, oh, yeah, my no. Link, my uh, Twitter's dead. I don't even use it. I hate it. I, I hate Twitter. As yeah, my thing is just negative. No, it's just crap. It like, really is. It's just boring. Like, think no, when the Queen died. Okay, then, yeah, I used it. Like, yeah, no, no, no. But like, you did like a nice tribute, right? But like... The amount of stuff on there that was hate, but well, like Instagram, like most of it was just like nice tribute posts, right? Mm. But like Twitter, it's just an excuse for people just to. I think a lot of people do it. Like, what about me? What about me? It's like the Queen's died, but they're somehow trying to make it about them. But I think this, it's like, who yeah, cares? I, who cares? Yeah, someone I I've unfollowed loads of people on Instagram recently that um were posting stuff about like, oh, it's so selfish that the football's cancelled because the Queen's died. Yeah, what about me? What well, it's like, don't forget me. It's not. It's not about you. Like this, it's so. I, I I don't understand that. I also didn't like the fact that I saw there was a was it a UFC or a boxing match? Booing like, it. Yeah, and shout USA like, yeah. oh, well, well done, you bellends. You managed to make yourself all look retarded. Yeah, Shamrock Shamrock Rovers. We'll beat that. That's fine. Yeah, Sham, Sham, that. Shamrock <laughs> Shamrock Rovers did one. I'm not going to say what it was, but it was about being in a box and they were chanting it a football match. I thought it was terrible. I don't. I I actually I wouldn't say that I really particularly like support the Royal Fam or anything. I don't really care. Doesn't bo- yeah. Doesn't bother me, but, but it's like, the respect of what's been achieved, like, right? Someone, someone's died, and she's achieved so much. It's been like plus seventy years or whatever. Is it eighty? What? How? About, she was in power for like over seventy years. Yeah, seventy-five. I want to say. But the point was, I was just like pure respect. Any anyone that's managed to do a graph like that, and then like when her husband died, she stayed in her own and, and things like that. Well, they abide to the rules when it was code, didn't they? They had the funeral with the right amount of people and everything like that. I, I, again, I don't particularly care whether we have a royal family. We don't have a royal family. I think it's class. We have tradition, but really, I mean, I like going seeing it and, and being a part of it. But realistically, do I care? No. No, it doesn't bother your life, but it, yeah, I'm, not, I'm also not going to go out there and be like, Mah, it's ridiculous. Did you they see take our money, taxpayers' money? Did you see the interviews where they were outside Buckingham Palace and there was obviously that guy? They just chose to pick him. They just been on a works night out, and yeah, he was he just smashed. it was off his face. Like, I saw something happening. Came down the road. Yeah. Walk and check it out. I was like, I mean, how would you even get him? And when you, why, why would you, why would you even put it out? No one, no one thought we should vet this guy first. Well, like, there was someone else. I think they came from Sweden for it, and they were putting a Princess Leila Lego statue from Star Wars down mm. as a sign of respect. That's an interesting point. So I saw a lot of uh, brands again. What about me, Thomas Cook? Thank Safe Travels. Save travels. I was like, oh, don't make this a marketing thing. And then the, there was Lego people and their pl- um, Playmobil queens and stuff. And they were posting pictures of their little Playmobil queens. Pandora did one where... Please don't say they put it in like a... Like they recreate like a funeral with the Lego and the Playmobil. No, no. Okay, no that, would be, a picture that would be terrible. It's like just a queen Playmobil, queen Lego. But the point was, why are you trying to turn it into a marketing opportunity? And then there was um, Pandora... They they did uh, a thing where they found something where she was all in pink, so it's aligned with their brand colours, and they posted a picture of her in pink. And I just thought it's just a bit tatty. It's very, like, I don't know. I think it's any excuse, right? I just don't think, I think definitely don't use a tragedy or a negative thing and try and spin it into marketing because it's not clever. Mm. It's just very, very 
disrespectful. Nine times out of ten. Yeah, well, that's the thing, obviously, because you obviously founded Hustle Marketing, even mm-hmm. though I always spell it wrong. But I don't. Everyone spell, spells it wrong. I don't spell it wrong anymore. It really annoys me. And you know what? I even have a T-shirt with it on the lo- on the arm, and I yeah. wear the T-shirt all the time, but I still will spell it wrong. There's a there's a company called Hustle H U S S L E, and I get all their customers ringing up all the time complaining. So they're obviously a very bad company because they're constantly complaining. But they ring me because uh, they just go on Google, type it in wrong, and then just ring me straight away. And I'm like, hello. Like, yeah, I'm just outside the gym, and I want to say your customer service is shit. And I'm like, <laughs> and sometimes I play with them. I'm like, you know what, mate? Stick it up your ass. That's what I think of you. <laughs> well, that doesn't arguing. surprise me. <laughs> and then they get like a really, but then again, have you ever had it where you get a Google review for them? Uh, no, never. See, that would be a bit far. I did have it? one. I did have one. Someone once did a fake Google review. I thought that was just sad. So, so sad. Well, I, I always think about that. When we have like a candidate that doesn't get a job that just thinks, oh, do you know what? I didn't get this job. Oh, I'm going to leave a bad review. And it's like, oh, it's not really a reflection of that. It's no. just, it's just terrible. But obviously hustle. You guys are very different. Obviously, you came on the podcast before. We spoke about very different things last time. When was the last time I was on this? Was uh, that two o- years ago? Over a year ago, a year and a half ago. Okay, a, lot, so a lot's changed since then. Yeah, so I'm going to my third year of business now, and back yeah. then I was just starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys are obviously very different. I mean, you guys did our website and everything like that. Brilliant. I said my phone was on silent. I know. Then, what a that cheeky, was, it, it cheeky was, man. Do you know what it was? That was my mum, where she's in my favourites. It comes straight through. So I'm just going to text your mum. You're going to text her saying, please stop texting Harry. We're on a podcast sure. and we're filmed. Your calls. Don't FaceTime my mum whilst we're doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can do it on Instagram anymore. I think she'll just think more, why is Lewis trying to FaceTime me? You're actually FaceTiming my mum during this podcast. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she declined it. Yeah. She declined it. Ah. Joe, why are you calling me and Harry when we're doing serious business things here? So... The, oh, we can't hear. Not even the funny thing is that you tried to call my mum on the podcast. She declined your podcast. She declined your call on the podcast. That's you know, your mum's cooler than you. I will. I'll say it. My, she has banter. Yeah. Actually, she, nine times out of ten, she's messaged me to abuse me about something. Yeah. Like, it'll just be random abuse. Oh yeah, you can see for your, no reason. Yeah, yeah. She's she's an icon. And everyone's, then if everyone's I ever say anything about you, she's like, "Do you dare talk about my little boy, my prince?" I'm like, "Oh my god." She doesn't say that though. She doesn't <laughs> say <laughs> my <laughs> prince. And if she would, it'd be the most sarcastic thing ever because that would not come exactly. out of her mouth. Um, oh no, I, I wrote you treat Tilly like a third child. Yeah. And then she was like, "What do you mean, like?" Yeah, it's a hangabout. <laughs> it was nothing about me. This is about the dog, right? Who is also an icon, but. Yeah. So I'm just, just laughing at all the things I've said you over the, <laughs> over the past. Just pictures of you. Uh, we've actually been on a night out with my mum as well, which is pretty funny when you think oh, of I? it. Yeah, when you came to Berkeley. She was out there drinking with us. Oh, right, okay. Oh, that. Um... Then we did the videography thing, and then you stayed for a couple of drinks before. Oh, yeah. And with um, yeah, yeah. when we all went for. Was it your birthday? No, it wasn't your birthday. I forgot your mum. Josh's birthday. birthday. Oh, yeah, at the club again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Party, yeah, we had a night out of her. That was, that was a good, good laugh. Ten. But massive. <laughs> back on to hustle. No, yeah, can we talk about what we came here to talk about? Yeah, today? you did. You, you <laughs> your mum rang it. in the middle of a call, and on, honestly, by the way, for the record, he said turn our phones off and make them silent. And clearly, it was it. My phone is. It was my watch. Do as I say, not as I do. So I've, I've thrown my watch down now as well. So we're, we're fine. <laughs> so obviously, you guys are very different. Um, and you make campaigns to reflect that, which we'll yes. get onto um, definitely. Um, obviously, some of the campaigns must get you in a bit of a trouble. No, never. As well, they never actually got you in trouble as such. No. I think I, I've, I, we've done some fun stuff. I think at first it's very much, uh, oh, what the hell is going on over there? And people sort of scrutinise it much more because they don't understand what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, now it's much more expected. Um, it's almost become accepted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I sort of get away with murder. I mean, I just posted Lewis Capaldi in his underpants on my LinkedIn. Yeah, very And I wrote a post about how much my mum likes him more than me. And that's a professional network. <laughs> and uh, and I just feel like, yeah, I get it. I think people are starting to get it, which is nice. Yeah. Um, I've never had anyone say anything negative. Even the naked one, the naked billboard, mm. that, that didn't really get any. People but, thought it was funny. Let's talk about negative. We're not going to speak about it too much, but just have a quick round. Why, why, like, do a lot of people comment on your stuff, negative stuff on LinkedIn, when you do the post like that? Do mm. you get quite, obviously, let's not name names, but... I would have I would have thought yeah but I tend I, do you know what when I first started posting yep. being different and saying I'm just going to be this way I got a lot of people being negative a lot of people trying to put me back down and like saying you sort of basically say you can't do that now 
I find that I don't really get any of that. Yeah. I think it's almost like they've just given up. Like They're like, oh, there's no point because he's not going to listen sort of thing. Well, it's your personal brand as well, isn't it? It literally says mm. disruptive. Yeah, I think that's the sort of clever bit of it as I can, I can act a fool with marketing now, whereas in the past, if I was just acting a fool for the sake of it, it's not very clever. But if you're doing it and aligning it with what your actual your job is, career, passion, clients, whatever, it's way more fun. Mm. Um, I'm just like thinking about the proposals that we send out now, the names of them. Like just, I remember you sometimes text me saying like, is this like too far? What do you think? Is this, this and, and I'm like, I'm like looking at it thinking, what are you going on about? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm like, I'm like cooking and I'll just get like a random call and I'm there like, you don't answer your phone. You're always like, what do you want? Don't don't call text. And then like when you call them, they're like, oh for God, what is I, it now? Like, I, 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 it's very early in the morning, by the way. So it's hard to be. It's 11.30. This is very early. In the, I've been driving for two hours. I was up at five. Uh, but the point is, um, yeah, no, the, it's 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 one of those things where I, I, I in the past would have done crazy stuff and silly things and people would be like, what an idiot, he's a moron, right, right. Regardless of what I did in my job or what I did in education, people would always just tie me as this idiot. But it's not. I was just being creative. Now I harness that evil genius and I put a point it towards marketing. Uh, and it's very it's very fun and it actually has a purpose now and it's like an outlet where I can I can harness all this like creative energy and push it that way. And and it's fun um and I really enjoy it. Um I got brought into a business the other day. Uh, yeah, I can't say. It. Oh yeah, previous employer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you know, they were like, we need, we just. It wasn't a case of, um, what do you think about this? We're like, we need you to come into our business, and it's a marketing company, by the way. I remember you sent me. You, you yeah, you did yeah. tell me something about. And this, I got yeah. to go in there and sit with their team and just come up with crazy ideas. And by the time I left, we had three or four different things that they can go in and do themselves because they already have the team in place. And I thought, isn't it amazing that I'm being brought in to consult? with a team of people that really do what I do, essentially, mm. because I just do it slightly differently. And, and because I do it in this way, it's, it's, not, easily re- it's not easily replicable. Like, it's quite different. Yeah. Um, and I'm only just starting to appreciate the fact that that, that creativity, that sort of uniqueness is, is, my, is my skill. That's my unique, that's my niche. Yeah. Um, and that's where it's become kind of like a disruptive marketing company now because I'm like, well, why, why try and run from it? Why not I use that and harness that? Yeah, see, I think it's quite good that you don't get the negative comments because obviously quite a lot of people do still get negative comments and everything like that. But like I said, that is where people expect it from you now. Mm. It's where you've been so consistent doing it. That is just, it's just standard, really. If you see your name, you're thinking, right, it's going to be something funny, disruptive. I've also spent a long time taking those criticisms and I've been in the in the sort of like public eye since The Apprentice and stuff like that and people have tried to jump on anything I've done and tried to drag me down. I spent so long doing that and then I've been sort of like fighting back against it for years. I feel like it's only just starting to pay off now Yeah, because people just don't bother because they know that I'm not going to be offended. I'm probably going to take it and use it as something else. Like like if someone says to me really negative, I'll like take their comment, go on their profile, find out about their life and then do a post about them. No one wants that kind of energy. I remember when, I'm not going to name the name in our group chat when someone said something once and you went through their Facebook and found a photo from them from like seven years ago and then just like... <laughs> Posting about it, and I was just like, "Oh." The thing is, like, people think there's no, there's no, um, there's no sort of comeuppance. People think there's no what's the word I'm looking for here? Consequence to their actions. They think I could just slag this person off because I have the right to that opinion, and you do have the right to that opinion. But I also have the right to then go and find out about you, and then share my opinion on you. And when that happens, it's not very nice. It's bullying. Yeah, but who's going to stick I mean personally I don't like bullies full stop mm. so I'll always try and fight them um, a lot of people never do that and they just and then those comments after a long period of time if you only see the negative things really starts to impact you mentally yeah yeah because um, you think it's true as mm. well so I, I try to uh, essentially fight back against those bullies reverse bully for example if I was in a playground a bully tried to bully me I'd punch him in the face I can't do that on the internet but what I can do is I can virtually punch them in the face how many times has a comment really wound you up and you thought I'm going to go to the house <laughs> like, is that ever happening? No, you just no, think no. like I, I, I did the other week. I'm like I, I I'm, I'm triggered. There, there I'm was like, one guy who was really nasty when I first started. I was like, we'll start a business, and he was for whatever reason he was targeting me. Um, and I remember that he was slagging off everything we were doing, and then his business reached out to me that he worked for 
um, and they tried, they hired me to do a project. And I was like, how funny is this? This guy's been slagging me off for X amount of time and now his business is hiring me to do the job. I actually refused to work with them, not on the basis that um, they were bad or anything. I said, like, I can't work with you because you've got people like this working for you. And I just couldn't, I couldn't align myself with that. Um, but the point was, he was based in Manchester and I knew where his office was. And I could have gone down there and just put him in the toilet. You know, like yeah, yeah, old yeah. school, like Swirly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's your age saying that. That's like that. My age wouldn't do that. Yeah, but. Swirly. Yeah, but I was yeah. just like, you're not worth that amount of effort. Yeah. Um, but it is always worth highlighting them, people. It's always worth, they want a platform, they want to say something negative, so let's make it about them. Let's highlight that as a problem and say, this is why it's not okay. This is the sort of person. And I think after a long period of time doing that, I know it's a really tedious. People say, ignore them and they'll go away. They don't go away. Don't. No, they don't. And we, we spoke about someone before, which we might say names and a thing. Mm. And that one person comments on our mutuals for a I, post I, every I, time I only find that those people actually go away when you highlight them they want attention let's give them attention let's take their post let's take that person and say well, this person said this this is why they said that it's probably because they're failing at this or they're, they're struggling with that and that's why they're projecting mm. onto me right and you sort of use it as a case study I, th- I always said to myself similar to a playground if I was being bullied I would then Take, I would knock that bully out, right? Or I would, yeah, yeah. I, I would stand up for people who don't have a voice, or I would stand up for people who can't stand up for themselves. And I always see it the same sort of thing. Like, just take that person. There's an example. This is why you shouldn't listen to people like that because this is who they are and this is why they're doing it. Case mm. study. And then if you see that, and then you're also having the same issue, it might resonate with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very rare that happens anymore. Like, it doesn't yeah. happen much. I feel like people are selective as well because you you would call someone out for it. People don't also think. I think people just bully people who think that they can't stand up for themselves. But then if you see them in real life, they'd literally. Oh, they'd run the other way. Well, not even that. They'd just be the most polite person in the world and they'd be like, oh, yeah, I really like this. Full square and, and everything like that. Suck my ass. Yeah, it, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I hate people like that. But... Um, but it doesn't happen much. So that's obviously a case. Uh, there's examples from a few years ago, but it's not as yeah. prominent anymore. Mm. I've got a few little things here from some of your campaigns you've done. Personally, I feel like this is going to be very relevant again soon. It's probably the oldest one out of the three that I've got here, but... You're the saying that because you know what I'm going to do next. Oh, yeah, I know what you're going to do next, yeah, 100%. That's why I'm saying it. But <laughs> this, obviously, was in was it the middle of Manchester. Yeah, that was that was right on a, on a street corner. Um, there was quite a lot of traffic. Interesting thing about this was... Uh, so the actual conversation went like this. I was talking to a client, and I said, look, you don't need to get naked. I used to say... You don't need to get naked on a billboard to be disruptive. You know, you just have to look at your environment, look at your landscape and look at what everyone else is not doing and then do something. However, um, and then I put the phone down. I was like, but I wonder if you can get naked on a billboard. So then yep. Google found the billboard company and made a phone And then call. you're... Well, then I was like, well, I'm not going naked on there just on my own. So I was like, well, what can I do that's funny? And I was like, well, I remember Burt Reynolds, sexiest man in the world picture and Cosmopolitan. So then I did that, the Photoshop chest and the moustache and yeah. Um... After the thing is, once when I'm doing stuff like this, I look, the idea is like, oh, I get so excited, and I'm like yeah, pulling yeah. all together, I'm like, got to do this, rah, rah, rah. And then when it goes up, I don't care about the results. I'm like, yeah. It was the fun, it was the process yeah, of it that pulling was fun. It together. Did you get any results from that? Um, yeah, we actually got a client off the back of this. And so, interestingly, the client that I got for this were based in North Carolina in America. And the guy that saw it, um, he was very, very high up in the American Navy and he's a silent partner in, a, in another company based in America. And he's like, I've seen this video, I've seen this picture of you on a billboard. Uh, you need to meet my partners um, and discuss what you could do with those. And I was like, how have you got from that <laughs> to I need to meet your partners? Was it, obviously, don't say like, you don't say industry, but was it like quite a corporate company or was it? Yeah, yeah, like a really... Um, Straight up and now, straight laced. I mean, Americans are quite straight laced anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like he was like, you need to work with him. Um, blue blue he, suit, white shirt kind of company. Yeah, he's yeah. like a he's like a very very senior sniper and like <laughs> like throws bombs around for a living. And he somehow came across this. It's but, weird that he's probably got that photo on his phone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's what's even weird is on his background on his phone. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you call him, but, that's what comes but, up. But that so that's that's the power of, of of just being different, isn't it? Like so, I didn't care if anyone on the street saw that because that wasn't yeah. the point. The point was to put it online and be like, Haha, "This is a bit of fun, uh, 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 fun in games." Um, and then off the back of that, he actually brought in real clients. You know, I was like, yeah. "How can I show I'm different?" I mean, that that billboard cost like four hundred quid, I think it was for. Three that's weeks. not too bad, actually. No, well, then you've got the photo shoot and the editing. It's probably like six, seven hundred quid. Yeah, and it was worth it then. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, well, it was just like one of the things that I was like, oh, I want to do something different. I want to be different. And how yeah. can I be different? I've never seen that before. Why not? And then the second one, this was, I think this might have been my favorite one. 
This was one of my favourites. Because I remember it happening and, and everything like that. And we spoke about it before. Obviously, Hyder. Would you want to actually... You, you tell the story about this it. Is, so this is one of my favourites. So I had this idea for a long time. I pitched this to everyone. I was like, what about this? Because every time I came across a client, they were like... The conversation goes like this. They go, Lewis, um, we've heard you're a disruptive guy. Like, how are you disruptive? And I'm like, well, you know, we did this thing with the naked billboard. We come up with a few ideas for clients. And I go through a few things. And then and, I'm, and then they're like, well, what would you come up with for us? And this idea came up in a, in a meeting ages ago. It was for a vodka brand. And they didn't go for it. Um, they wanted to smash they, they wanted to smash a vodka bottle on someone's head instead, which is crazy. Um, but... Yeah, yeah. That could end badly though if someone jumped in. It wasn't in. real vodka. It no. wasn't real vodka bottle. It was no, no. I know, but if someone saw it in the street. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I, I pitched this to them, but I originally pitched it with James. No, not James. Justin Bieber. We spoke about. Yeah, this. I told you this ages ago. Yeah, I was like, we when were going to go. Performing? We were going to go to the Kid Leroy concert. Yeah, and you were going to do it with him. I, I was, was like, I was like, I don't think he's got a big enough platform yeah. for it here at the time. And then you said, "When's Bieber playing?" I was like, "Not for like three years." Like. So I had this idea to use a celebrity who's performing in town at the time and then turn it into an advert of some sort for a brand. And I just couldn't find anyone performing at the right times. Anyway, Ellen John was performing in Manchester. So I planned everything. I got fake security, Bentley. Um, was it Liverpool? Four by four. Yeah, bear with me. So all right, fine, I planned it off Manchester. Up. Like a week before I go to check the concert times, what time the doors open. And it was like 2023. 20, and I was like, ah. oh, no, I've absolutely screwed the pooch here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've already booked for this Elton John, the number one Elton John lookalike to come up from London. I've got all these trains books and everything. Um, so I'm like, cack. And I found out that luckily his tour started in 2022. So I'd booked planning in Manchester, but it started in Liverpool in 2022, like two That's weeks weird. later. So I was pushed back the train, rearranged everything. And last minute I was like, okay, I had to go to Liverpool, scout around. The idea was... Elton John's lost his sunglasses and he's going to go Primark and pick them up. And the, 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 what makes it creative was the fact that, you know, it looks like Elton John. We put a fake security team with him. We had two nice cars that pulled up, sort of pulled in like, and he jumps out and starts walking down the street. We knew to get attention. We could get a, a black, like a big car that would be like, people turn around and see security. So the idea was to get people's eyes on him. And he walks to the shop and then a member of Primark staff runs out, gives him some glasses and he puts them on and goes to his concert. Did the person actually work at Primark? No, that was a fake member of staff. Fine, I did think that as well. Um, so I had fake members of staff, fake security in. And, and actually, that girl was stood on the door. Um, her, <laughs> her manager, the person who was the manager was kicking off going, why the hell are you still outside? We've got shit to do inside. And she's like, I don't work here. And he's like, I don't understand. <laughs> so, so, so she's wearing the Primark outfit. <laughs> she's wearing a full Primark uniform. The manager's going mad at her inside, going, "Why are you still outside? It's not you're not on a break." She's oh, like, "I don't man. work here." Um, and then next thing you know, like Ellen John walks up. So it was it was very interesting. The, and then it worked in my head. That was kind of the concept. And could it be fun? Yes. Is it class as disruptive? Well, naturally, it's actually disruptive. It's like it's yeah. publicly disruptive, but it's also hopefully going to get some press. It'd be very unique. It's a bit different, and it is a real advert underneath the, in the in the bottom of it. Um, that was the first idea. Went crazy. Um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people like swarmed him. We couldn't even get out the centre. And when we got out, we, the, the Bentley broke down. Well, we broke the Bentley, wow. and then that that had to be run to a car park, pushed into a car park. And by the time we got in there, people had recognised that our fake Ellen was sat in the four by four behind it, and the car park got mobbed and. It was crazy, like one of the craziest days. And this photographer that took this picture, um, he actually believed it was Ellen John. And it was only when I messaged him on Twitter because I suddenly posted it. I was like, I was sending you them as well because I remember TikTok. You, I don't think you'd seen that video yet, and I sent it to you, and you were there like, "That's done a million views." Yeah. yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, it's." As it's so, mental. it's very annoying that. So mine got about the the actual video, yeah. the actual video, the advert. No one really cared about. Everyone wanted to see the behind the scenes of making this thing. Um, and mine's got like a quarter of a million views on it just on TikTok. This person got like 12 million views. I was like, God, why did they, f they filmed it? Because they filmed it as it was happening. Yeah. But yeah. It, it- And they thought it was out and drawn at the start. And the plan, the plan was to get people's eyes on this concept. Um, and obviously if it was a brand, we would have more branding in there. Rah, rah, rah. So there'd be all these other things caught in it and people would think it was real. And then for, therefore it would actually work the way we planned. You know, well, how much would you someone pay a company like- well, not Primark, but just a normal company, for example, for 12 million views. Yeah, exactly. A lot. And and the thing is, but a company like, for example, take Primark, they'd just rather spend their money on Google ads and Facebook ads and run the same cat yeah. boring stuff over and over again, right? And, every, and this is my problem with the industry right now is everyone is doing the same thing. 
it is not interesting. It's so, and as a person working in that space, I just could not be bothered. I, I just don't care like enough to go, oh, let's get this nice, pretty graphic and this picture of this person wearing yeah. this dress and we'll post that and we'll see what ROI we get. And, and then we'll do that over and over again and we'll do A-B testing so we get like 0.1 pence change. I'm, I just don't care because yeah, yeah. that is not marketing. That's just being strangled and by data. And, 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 and we, it's almost like people, I mean, it is marketing, yeah, it's a, but it's a basic. Like, yeah, 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 of course. Run some ads. Get some billboards, rah rah, um, get some print, get some TV, whatever, right? This whole basic stuff. So if you're all doing the basic stuff and all your competitors are doing the same basic stuff, then what else are you doing that's different? How are you getting yourself out there? What are you doing to raise brand awareness? How are you displaying your brand values? Um, because you're probably not doing it in, in just an ad. Mm. Um, and everyone thinks doing this quirky, like, oh, I want to do a really fun ad just like Dollar Shave Club. It's like, yeah, fine. but everyone says that you nug it. Therefore, it's not going to have the same impact it had when it was back then, because back then that was a disruptive way of working. That was a disruptive campaign, disruptive campaign. So anyway, um, the point is, I couldn't keep doing that stuff anymore. It was really boring me. So I wanted yeah. to get more creative, and and sometimes you know, like you can create some more noise. Like with this one, we had a small budget. We ran it, and we showed that it was would have worked. If we had a bigger budget, we could have gone ten times more. You yeah, know, we could have got more press. We could have got way more in terms of advertisements. Because if you see an ad for this, you probably watch it because people are watching it anyway. Yeah, um, and you'd recognize it, and then you think, okay, yeah, hang you remember, oh, that person did that. Oh, that that Elton John was in Liverpool that day, and like, well, then you find out more about it. And you know, in the midst of all that, it's actually an advert for. Pretty much, Do you reckon Elton John seen it. Uh, I reckon he has. He hates that guy. Oh, really? Yeah, he hates him. He hates him because he looks like him. And he goes to his gigs. So uh, he was telling me, like, he goes, he was sat at the front row at an Elton John concert and Elton John security came off and Elton John didn't come on stage and so he came off and took his wig off because he was like, he creeps him out. I mean, it would be creepy, wouldn't it? Imagine. Yeah, it's like the Ed Sheeran looking like. Have you seen him? Yeah. He looks scary. So like two weeks after we did this, someone tried it with exactly the same setup. Yeah. I feel Sheeran. like a little snitch actually because that was me as well yeah. I sent that to you yeah yeah but it's interesting to see someone had seen it doing really well on TikTok and gone oh we can do that same thing and literally copied it with Ed Sheeran but it didn't work no I did like what 10,000 I don't know he didn't get any views as for what I saw and then they really tried to push it and then eventually the brand actually posted going oh is this Ed Sheeran in our shop and I was like oh them guys are the ones that paid for it then yeah, because yeah. it wasn't getting attention. It still didn't really get any attention. See, I only saw when they posted it. I didn't see anyone else. Oh, but also, rats. that Ed Sheeran one is used by a lot of people. Mm. I just don't think it was creative enough. Like, you got to think of the why. Why would people? It's like going to the stupid details. Why would people believe it was Alan John? Well, Alan John was performing, right? So, yeah, and yeah. it was at the time he was performing. It was a few hours before that, right? So it would have made sense that he wouldn't be at the concert. Yeah, but he is in the area, and people know he's in the area. And then you put that with security. Uh, and then we give him a genuine reason to go into town. Yeah, And fans. He'd have fans in Liverpool at that time. That was the point, right? So yeah. we knew the fans are going to be there at 6pm to watch the gig, to go to the gig. So what, where might they be at 4 or 3pm? Well, they're probably going to be in the city centre, right? So that was kind of the, the concept. Yeah. Um, so it was actually a little bit more planning than you would think. It wasn't just random. But I, I loved it, me. I, that was one of the most fun things I've done in a long time. Mm. And then, yeah, it worked. And I was like, okay, so this works. What what else can I do? Because I've got to show people why this is unique. Why does it work? Yeah, you know how could this be a powerful advertising campaign as well? How could you? I mean, you could take this concept, Ellen John. You go right. We run this campaign. Everyone sees it. It goes viral organically, right? It already has. <laughs> then the press. We push it to press because we've got a budget for that. And the press runs stories on it. Oh, Ellen John, rah rah rah. And then on top of that, we do maybe a billboard campaign, and then we do a I don't know. Uh, just generic social ad campaign. Yeah, yeah. And then we run some Google ads for people that are searching for Elton, details about Elton John and then we do behind the scenes video. And then all of a sudden you get this full campaign that's mm. just on one disruptive co- piece of content that actually, you know, lines up with all the other stuff you're doing as well. It falls, it doesn't take away from any of the other marketing. Mm. It's just more brand awareness. And that's kind of what I wanted to do more of. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you did, didn't you? Because then this one happened. Which yeah. To this there's not actually a photo on here i think oh there's the video of you doing it celebrating people nice. are like why did you why can't you why'd you cut the faces out why can't we hear you talking to him it's like well i didn't want the guy to get deported yeah i mean it could have gone wrong when you first said to me about it i was like uh, are you sh- you sure i was like is it something that like i said it also, there's quite strict rules in guitar I have no idea what the law is in Qatar. Yeah, I did think that. I, I was, was like, like, how safe is it? I was Googling. Originally, I was Googling. Not very. Well, yeah. I, well, no, it is, it is really safe. But I was Googling things like, um, look, it's 2,000 shares in that one story. Um, yeah. Oh, like, it's mental. I was Googling things like, um, how safe is it in Nepal? Because they were originally in Nepal. Yeah. That was like the joke. Like, oh, should I go and get them back? And I was like, oh, yeah, do it. Annoyingly, so this is a real thing that happened. My AirPods actually did get lost. I actually 
did track them. I locked them to my phone, so you can't remove them. You can never remove them unless you remove it yourself. Yeah. And I've been watching them ever since. And and I, I was like, maybe I should get them back. It's a bit of fun content for social media. And I was like, but what if I turn this into some advertising content? What if I do it? Okay, well, it's actually an Apple product using an Apple phone and an Apple Mac to track down Apple AirPods. They're all linked. It's find my feature. So it's technically showcasing how strong that product um, is for that feature. Yeah. What if I turn that into an ad? And I was like, well, I don't think Apple have ever done anything like this before. No one believed it was that strong, did they? Because there are loads of people there like... Everyone's like, it's fake. Yeah. Or he I left them there or he paid his mate. I'm like, no, I actually try. Like, it's nothing fake about it. Like, we actually filmed the whole thing from start uh, to finish. Because if anyone has you on socials, I think you went... When did you lose them? A year ago? Six months? <sighs> Because it was... I was skiing. So it was like five months before this. I thought it was January, when you flew February. to... Thailand, back to the UK. Yeah. And I stopped off in Doha. Oh, yeah, because it was the Mr... Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. And then... And then uh, yeah, because regionals were... The national was August, because that was Reading Festival and went to that. Yeah. Fine, yeah. So it's February. And then March, I remember because I went skiing in March, and everyone, I, was com- <laughs> I was complaining the entire time, like, ah, oh, not got my AirPods, I can't listen to when I'm skiing. I was money for like weeks. Um... And then, yes, yeah, so and then and then I just forgot about them. And then it was only two months later, I was, oh, a month later, I started noticing that I could track them. And yeah. then I sort of just checked in like every once once a month. It was more than once a month. Because yeah, uh, you, on your story, <laughs> it would be like every other week. And then in the WhatsApp group chat, you were like, my AirPods are here. My yeah. AirPods are in Turkey now. My AirPods are here. And we'd be there like, just stop tracking them. You're like, no, I'm going to get them. And I was like, oh, here we go. It was, yeah, so... The, the a situation presents itself and I'm like, how can I use this to, mm. to just be different? And now, obviously, I didn't expect it to go as crazy as it did. I thought it would get some attention. I thought it'd be very unique. I didn't think anything more than maybe Apple might reach out to me and say, that was quite cool. Can we post it? Yeah. You know? um, I mean, that would have been even bigger. That would have been sick, though, if that had happened. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and, and the other thing was, I actually said to Qatar Airways, but they wouldn't help me. I was like, if you don't help me, I'm going to make so much noise. I'm going to do your head in, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And they were just like, good luck, mate. Basically. So I was like, Mm, okay then because then it was like a day I was like okay fine yeah and again the, put, put, put it down into into marketing like it was target audience who we were trying to show it to what might they enjoy so that's kind of like we went okay let's go more vloggy we know they watch a lot of vlogs we know this like this, this sort of content we know we make it funny yeah we do it shot on one camera um, it's, a, it's an, a, a unique story anyway it's quite out there you know um uh, and we'll create it for the audience. So that's, you just break it down like a normal campaign. And then, okay, we, we tell them what we're doing first. We're, we're doing an advert. This is why we're doing it. This is how we're doing it. And then we go and do it. And then we make sure no one gets hurt in the process. Like, so for example, um, we hide people's faces. And yeah. we don't show their voices. We try not to show their exact locations. So like you can show the areas in, because obviously I didn't find them straight away. I was there for hours. So it's yeah, like, going to find the house. But um, yeah, that, the idea was make sure that it was ethical, like as well. And then, and then just see what happens. So when we got there, we had no idea. We had no plan. And I had the car. I paid the hotel. I paid these two flights. I got a videographer with me. And I paid all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to get back. And, and after a full day, we managed to get them, Which is why, by the end of it, I'm like super excited. Because I didn't actually expect to get them back. And it was the first day as well. And the first day, yeah. Yeah. Because I remember getting the message, I've got them. And I was like, no, you haven't. I know, yeah. And then you sent a photo with them. I was like, okay. I, even I was shocked at getting them back. And, and I, I thought you were going to get arrested. I, uh, well, I that's what I genuinely thought would happen. I thought I might end up getting in a scrap because yeah. I didn't know. I knew there was a lot of people living in these houses together, the shared accommodation, and obviously I thought it's a thief. Then they're not going to want to give up the thing easier, and they're just having to screw off, sort of thing. I didn't know how safe it was, but I thought, why not just take the risk anyway? Um, like, yeah, I get it. It was a bit silly. It was a bit of fun. It was a bit more like a silly little idea. You were you, petty. Yeah, it was that. Like it was in your head, wasn't it? As well, and you were there, like I'm, I'm getting these back. Yeah, now. so it's like a mixture of something petty, and then I've turned it into an opportunity, and then gone, okay, how can I align this with marketing? And then again, it's creative outlet for me, because if I'd just done, if I didn't work in marketing, I just did that off the off the bat, then it would have been a funny story, but it wouldn't really have any purpose. Yeah, and I think quite a lot of people didn't get that in the comments. I mean, I don't really know what he's going to say. This is oh, really, Daily Mail's bad. It, Always is. This is really risky. Um, Ah, there you go. <laughs> if he's a great businessman, why is he in economy and living in ex social housing? Well, first off, you don't see where I live, and secondly, economy on the plane. He won't. He won't have any problems paying his electric bill then. Um, like yeah, it's like I would just bought new ones. Best, best rated. He's got AirPods back. That's been worn by someone else for months. Nice. I actually don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. I bet you didn't clean them either. No, I did. I, t- uh, I, t- I swapped the ends around and then washed them. Moron. So that, that, that sort of stuff though. <laughs> yeah, it's... I love it though because if it wasn't for people like this, then there'd be no... Like, I need people to be like this because if everyone was like going, oh, I get it, I'll do the same thing. 
it'd take away from what, what we do. There's a few here that I just think are ridiculous. So, like, have you ever heard of the postal system? Well, obviously, they weren't giving them back if you read the article. And the other one is attention-seeking on an elaborate scale. Yes. It's a marketing campaign. That's the whole point. That's, that's it. I know, yeah. But, yeah. but it's important, though, because if people... If people weren't like, if people, if everyone was like, oh my God, that's a great idea. Like, let's think of something for our business. Then I wouldn't have a business. Yeah. If people were like, um, oh, I get it. Like, that's smart, right? right, right. Then again, I wouldn't have a business because they'd all start coming up with their own things. If other marketing agencies start copying what I'm doing, then I just take away from my little niche, right? So yeah. whilst they don't get it, and obviously it helps with the algorithms and people commenting on it and stuff. Yeah, it's great of course. But it, it's always amazing to me because I surround myself with people who are involved in business and people that are doing their own thing. And I always go out and meet people that are doing you know, something. So as far as my circles are concerned, I just assume that everyone is a business person. I would understand it, yeah. So it's only when I see stuff like that, I'm like, actually, 99% of people are not that minded. Yeah, well, because I was in the comments, and I had to stop myself as well, because I was in the comments thinking, hang, hang about, you're saying this about him, that's my mate there. And I was like sticking up in the comments, and I was thinking, what am I doing? Like, what? I, I, well, this is, what's the point? Like, I don't care. Yeah. And I was arguing with people that are like, in Liverpool, and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, and off the back yeah. of that, so off the back of that, it's two thousand four hundred pounds spend, but we've proposed about a quarter of a million pounds worth of work. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Now, I that some might of the not names that... you were saying as well to me at the time, yeah, and yeah. I was thinking like I'm not going to say them, but like that is so on brand with you as well. And so obviously, I can't. Not all them deals are going to come in, but even if just one came in, I would make probably ten times what I did spend there, right? Yeah. So it's just one of those common sense things but a lot of people don't get it which is great because again I'm going to take that I'm going to do something else the problem is I don't want to do all the same things but this one works so well yeah. as a vlog format um, with a creative unique thing happening like, I can't help but think I'm going to just do that Yeah, because and all it takes is this next one to do something similar for then the Elton John one to blow back up because mm. then they'll start going okay well there was the same guy that's done all of these but there's no been like correlation yet there's one there's one here was was he a star or contestant like the only thing I think about that is technically you were a star of it because you were in the final part mm. and you were in it a lot. And we've been on enough nights out where people still remember you and it's like, want to stop and have a chat and stuff like that. Where's well, the point that we obviously mock it sometimes. I don't, I don't care about any of that shit. Yeah, it's just a bit like, what, well, uh, Richard. I love it though. But it's just... Um, it's important. It's, it's important for people to be like this. Unfortunately, like so, you're reading the comments. I've never even read these comments. Yeah, so I, I, just I, don't care. I just thought, you know what? Should I click them? And I was thinking, you know what? I'm just going to click them quickly. Not most people. This is I always say the same thing. Most people don't just don't do anything. Yeah, they don't. They just go get up in the morning, go to work. I mean, I was this person, right? I used to do this for years until I, I back in 2016. I said, you know, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, I'm going to do it my way. And I did a post on LinkedIn and on Instagram, and I shared it. And I, I sometimes screenshot it, but it's like I refuse to do life the same as everyone else. I re I made like a point a statement saying I'm just not going to do it the same way as you guys. Yeah. I used to walk to work in the morning through Manchester, look around, and about six uh, six thirty to like eight thirty, just trolls of people just walking and sad like everyone just looks miserable it's grey skies everyone's freezing cold on the way to work no one's happy and I used to walk that walk and I was like I'm doing this but I was like there's no way in hell is this going to be my life and I just decided I'm not going to do not going to play rules the same as everyone else I'm going to do mm. my own thing um, and since I just felt a bit more free um, and I was still at the time restricted to a job and I, and I had someone sort of put, put me down 24-7 and I just and I, no matter where I went there was always some sort of similar boss doing something like that trying to put you down and I just yeah, thought yeah. What is life? Like, this is not what we're born. To. Not We don't wake up in the morning. We're not supposed to wake up in the morning, go be miserable all day, come back, eat some food, go sleep, and do that on repeat until Saturday and we go out and get drunk and try and forget about it. Yeah, like, yeah. I d that's just not my life anymore. Mm. So, you know, for two years, I've been able to just be myself. And it's like, just doing things like this makes me happier. Mm. It makes, it's more fun. It's an adventure. Like, like I said, nine, nine out of 10 people just don't, won't do anything yeah. not noteworthy. No, you've met like you think you've met loads of people from doing just been out enjoying yourself. But hey, since since 2016 to 2022, Us. so six years since I said I'm not doing it the same as everyone else to now. Yeah, I can list out you know everything that's happened between now, like even just things like learning to fly, going yeah. on stage at a comedy club and getting booed off three times. Like Did you? I just started taking advantage <laughs> of every opportunity. You know, when, when was that? I decided I wanted to try and write a comedy sketch. It did not work. But the point is, I did it, and and most people just don't do those things. Like um, you DJed in Burnley. I did not DJ, but that's in the DJ box. But the point is, like all these, all these things that I, I take for granted now. Like oh, yeah. I, I have the freedom to do that, and 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 I just enjoy it. And then the next thing, and enjoy it, and the next thing. Most people will never do any of those things. Yeah. Um, and I just don't think that's any way to live. So yeah, I, I just, I just don't care about 
people who write comments like, oh, they're an idiot, or what a businessman. Because I know they're not a business person. I know if they are a business person, their business is probably dying because yeah, yeah. they're not exploring new and fun opportunities. And if, if it wasn't dying for whatever reason, I bet you any money I wouldn't want to work there. So That, that was the other one. I remember, um, you know, you know Ted Lawler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a mutual of ours. He, when his book went out or something, that was a, it was a news article about it and it was saying something like, oh, it's done this many sales. And someone went, maybe we should get a real job because that's nothing. And then like, I was me and Ted were talking about it, and I was like, "Don't like retaliate to it and everything like that." Like we found out like, what the guy's job was, the average salary. Like he proper went into detail, and I was like, "Just it's don't, uh, like, again fight. when when I, when it was on the Apprentice, and I was and that stuff would happen. I'd get obsessed with it and like try and find out about the people. Why would they say that about me? But then it, it's always a sad story. Yeah, yeah. It's not even worth looking at because it just brings you down. Like as in you'll look at them and you can you be like, "Oh, that's why they are the way they are." It's never it's never a great person. It's never a good person. It's never someone who's you know, succeeding or, or winning at anything. Because they, they wouldn't need to do that if they were. No, and it's, so, it's just so sad. The LinkedIn negativity as well. Yeah, but again, people. so LinkedIn's a unique one because you would assume that people there are professionals, but it just goes to show just how a lot of these people are just so accustomed to being toxic or that environment being toxic that they think it's okay. Yeah. And like, I couldn't I couldn't fathom working alongside them. Um, I don't think I'd be able to stop myself punching someone in the face, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I've said that I'd rather, for like certain things, say if it was like corporate events or something like that, I said I'd rather never go to a corporate event than buy one off someone. That was like that. I, I, I see people writing stuff and I don't agree with it. And I'm like, cool. I don't write anything because yeah, why, why would I? So I have this, I, I know it's really cheesy, but like the universe and karma and all this sort of stuff. Like I read a lot about it and I, and I really buy into the, the sort of what you put out there, you get back. And if you're out there putting shit on people and being negative 24-7, you can guarantee it'll come back tenfold. Yeah. Same as if you walk around going, why me? Why is my life so poor? Why do, Why is this? Why is that happening to me? Like, you will just attract it because you're putting it out in the world saying that you want more of it. Yeah. Uh, I'm so unlucky. Have you met goes, I'm so unlucky. Like, that person that says that, they yeah, are it, literally unlucky because they attract it. Well, do you know, like, I, I'm in a group chat on WhatsApp um, and like we all just like love like basically the same clothing company. It sounds really weird that we're in this group chat together. Yeah, yeah. But there's like certain people in there, and this is one guy called like Jake, for example. That like, like he'll just send like a positive message to every single person in the morning and at night. I feel like I've got a girlfriend, but I don't because I get like a nice little sort of morning message in this one group chat, and it's really weird. But everyone's so positive in there, and then you see other people in that chat, loads of positive things starting to happen from to them, and there's not that many negatives that are happening in there, and everyone's so positive with each other and stuff like that, and like saying like nice things, and then their lives are all in a lot better yeah. way. And it's think is that just because you're preaching that? I think that. You become a product. You literally become a product of your environment. You become yeah. a product of who you spend most time with. And it's, it sounds sad and cheesy and whatever, but like I surround myself with people that I can ring up and go, what do you think of this idea? I yeah. said before, I have an idea. I'm going to message someone like yeah. what they think. And then bat things around and then it comes out. And then, and then but like uh, most people kind of stop at that, right? So when you're planning to do something or you, I go back to the point, right? So surround yourself with people that, that are, are aligned with your goals, right? People that are uh, think like you, feel like you, people that are also trying to chase their own dreams. They're, that's one so, sort of piece of advice to anyone that, that is trying to get out of that sort of routine. Like, you know, I was in that routine as well. And the second thing is, in terms of doing things differently, mm. you, those people, uh, will, you know, they're going to be instrumental in like sort of, you reach out to them because you can trust their opinion. You know that they're not going to pull things down and be negative straight away. Um, but most people stop at that sort of research phase. They want to do something different. They go, oh, I've really wanted to do this my entire life. Or, you know, for example, this AirPod thing. Oh, like, I, had to, I had to put that one back on oh, just because it's my favourite. Well, the, the billboard thing, right? Yeah, so like, yeah. Even that, I was like, I've always wanted to do, I've, oh, what if I did this? And then you do all the research and then people just talk themselves out of it. And they go, oh, next time, whatever. And then someone else beats them to it, like Lewis Capaldi did the same thing. Yeah. Like, if I'd seen that, I'd be like, oh, no, forget it. Someone's already done it. But I take an idea, bounce it around my, my, my sort of support group, see what everyone thinks. If it gets sort of like, yeah, sometimes they add to it. They go, what about this? What about that yeah, twist? Yeah. And then from there, I just action it immediately. I action it without thinking. I just go, right, cool. Billboard's been booked. I need to get a photographer. Found a photographer. Cool, that's done. Yeah, yeah. And action things. And then pull, and that sort of stuff I really enjoy. And then when it's actually finished, that, I, didn't, I didn't really care what it looked like. Yeah, well, if you sit on it too much, you'll talk yourself out of it. Exactly. You'll find the negatives. In it. But do you think your spike as such like correlates with all of that? Um, obviously, you spike the unique thing that makes you <laughs> stand out. I'm not doing the whole massive spiel. But I want to hear this feel. Oh, really? I have to do it with everyone. But I feel like you know what it is, and it's the thing that's unique to you that makes you sort of help you to stand out. I think obviously a lot of what you said does evolve sort of around what your spike is, and I think there might be multiple different spikes as such. But do you think there's one thing in particular that sort of helps you stand out and be? Yeah, I think I think I'm just not afraid to have fun. 
Yeah. Genuinely. Like I, like I said the other day, I got brought into a, a meeting to lead and consult with a team of people who run a marketing agency, right? Yeah. That everyone that should know what they're doing. They, they have their own clients that come to them for ideas, but then they're bringing in me, a founder of another agency, to tell them what to do. And it's not because I know marketing better than them. It's because I'm just not afraid to have fun. I'm like, yeah. what about this? And what about that? And you're just like, I mean, I literally got some big piece of white paper, put it in front of them all. There's a pen. Let's write down some crazy, crazy ideas. Whatever. What have you always wanted to do? What have you seen that's worked well enough? And you know, what is it? You start sort of finding loose connections between the products and the service and actually come up with these crazy ideas. And then you come up with very creative campaigns and then running them. Uh, action in them mm. so I'm just not afraid to have fun I just I, I think for a long time I was worried and second guessing now about myself like what, should I do that could I do that you know am I the right person to do that but yeah. I just don't the things I just don't care anymore just start mm. doing things and action in them uh, and then yeah just carry on just didn't take that and then do the next one and the next one and just don't stop having fun yeah I think that's infectious with you as well because then people around you start buying into it and they have that attitude as well yeah and it's, then everyone has a bit more of a it's look. I un, uh, bottom line is I've worked ten years in marketing. I've got degrees and qualifications and master's degrees in it. So I've educated myself as far as academics go. Yeah. And then I spent a long time working it. Right. So technically, I should know marketing. Right. Mm. So if I know marketing now, then why should I be afraid to have fun with it and do something? Because people can't be like, oh, he's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. There was no marketing people that wrote about the AirPods or the billboard and said, how can you call yourself a marketing person? You don't have a clue what you're doing because they know yeah, yeah. they get it right. So they understand that there's a loose connection, and I've used that to then create in a unique campaign. Um, and target my demographic. That's the whole point. Um, but anyone else that's not in that realm wouldn't get that. No, so no, of course. For years, I was like second guessing what I was going to do because I was worried about all the people over here. But actually, I just do what I want to do now and have fun with it and create unique campaigns. And you know, I don't know where we're going to be in two or three or four years, but I'm I'm wanting to do campaigns for like you know Red Bulls and Pepsi Colas and just the really creative brands that have got massive budgets. Yeah. Like. And let's go something crazy. It doesn't even have to be crazy. It just I can guarantee it will not be the same crap that everyone else is putting out, though. That's the problem I've got right now is that everyone is just doing the same old cack. Even the brands with massive budgets are just doing the same tired, boring shit. Like, do you know the ones that I used to love? I know you don't like football, but um, Pepsi used to do them. They'd get all like the really big footballers at the time and they have like a beach football match and it'd be the most like, unrealistic match in the world. Mm. But those adverts, I still remember them now, but it was when I was like five or six. There's some, I mean, like... I'm trying to think of examples of really just poor marketing but massive budgets. I mean, I I went to a photo shoot for a brand, um, a clothing brand, really well known. I'm not going to bother slagging them off, but I went down there and they'd, I was working for a motorcycle brand at the time. I took some bikes down there as the marketing manager yeah. um, and I was there on the shoot all day and there must have been like 40 people involved, loads of models from America being flown over and they were all shooting on London Thames. Um, and the, the, the conversation was around the fact that they had spent 150 grand on this photo shoot for this one brochure, for this one season of clothing. And it wasn't even, I mean, that one shot, that one shoot wasn't even the entire catalogue. They were going to be doing it in lots of different places. So the amount of money that had just been pissed away to create something that didn't, no one would even really care about, it wouldn't yeah. really stand out to anyone. And that's the bottom line, right? If your marketing would not stand out to someone, if someone could walk past it and not really pay any attention to it, is it, money as well. is it, is it, is it marketing? Or is it just a waste of money and you're doing it because you think you're supposed to do it? Yeah. Marketing's become like a, I always use the word circle jerk. <laughs> it's not, but it's, it's a tar- apparently it doesn't, it's not as naughty as it sounds, but I mean it yeah. in a naughty way, but it's not as naughty as it sounds. Right? It actually means people are just like patting themselves on the back going, well done guys, well done guys. Yeah, yeah. And I look at all the uh, marketing awards <laughs> and the marketing award winners and I look at the sort of stuff they're coming up with. I'm just like, most of it's crap. Like yeah, most yeah. of it is the same tired or boring stuff. Mm. And they're like stuck in this revolution of just shite. Um, Whereas I can sometimes, I'll, I'll be walking down the road or I'll clock something on social media and I'll be like, that is just amazing. Like, such a great campaign or that's so creative. Um, you know, one of my favourite ones was the the bus. Someone had, like, done a concept for uh, buses and Coca-Cola and, like, every time the bus stops, it goes, and It was like that yeah, sound. Yeah, that's good. And I thought that was quite clever because it not only... It's, it's clever, but it also is directly relevant to the products and the sound that the product makes. And, yeah. and that's why it's very creative. Um, as opposed to putting a billboard saying buy coke do you know what I mean yeah yeah of um, course I guess some companies like that feel like they don't need to they don't need to be you don't, with that sort of budget it's lazy It's well with that sort of budget you don't really need to do much marketing right but like look at Red Bull Red Bull don't need to fly planes through tunnels they don't need to send skiers on paragliders football teams Red Bull yeah they're with a football team. They've got football teams. They've got football teams. Are they? Yeah. No, but I mean, they, they don't sponsor. I'm talking there, about the yeah. things the campaigns they do. They don't need to yeah, fly yeah, a plane yeah. through a tunnel. They don't need to uh, get a skier and paragliding to ski over roofs of houses. They don't need to do all the crazy shit they do. They don't need to ride a motorcycle off a thing and base jump or whatever. 
But they do it because it's great brand awareness. It's mm. directly relevant to their target market. If yeah. someone rides a motor, for example, flying a plane, if someone flies a plane through a tunnel uh, for the first time ever, that is that what's that saying? It's not relevant to it's not it's not promoting the drinks brand. It's not saying buy the drink. Yeah, but yeah. It's saying to the people who would buy the drink, look how cool we are, look how unique we are, look how yeah, we yeah. think, look how we feel. If your if your values are aligned with these values, you should buy our product. And that's the uh, that's the subconscious underlying message there, right? Um, and it works really well. That's an example of a brand doing really well. Mm. Um, but then you've got like Costa Coffee, who will just put a billboard saying Costa or whatever. It works for them, doesn't it? But does it? Oh, well, no. I don't know. I, I prefer Costa to Starbucks. So. Are we buying, uh, is the marketing just wasted because it's just the same old tired stuff that everyone else is doing? Like It's like when you see radio, hear radio ads and literally every radio ad sounds like the same. Same person saying it. Yeah. Like everything like that. It drives you mad. I'd love to do a radio ad. Just like... Speaking, really, slowly. But that's what they all but sound no like, anyway. Reason. <laughs> but they, they, they all, they, yeah, they all, they all sound like that. But they've got, I've got one last question for you. Yeah. And I ask everyone this, and Tom's, I thought Tom's was a little bit predictable. His. Stella. No, nah, it's not your favourite drink. It's not all about alcohol. I'm not even I drinking. Thought, I thought that's what he was going to say, though. No, no, no. That's no. the most it's, questions. Stella. It's three. <laughs> I did buy him a crate of Stellas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he, he, was, he was over the moon about it. But dinner guest, three people, dead or alive, that you can invite. His was like, the Queen. The Queen was alive at this point. It was like a West Ham footballer and someone else. And I was like, that's pretty predictable. Like, yeah. And everything. But who, who, would you, who would you pick? I got in trouble for mine. I'll tell you off camera. Um, I should say that every time as well. Because I'm not saying it again. I'm trying to think who, I don't know, you know. I don't really like going to dinner, dinner parties and stuff. I think they're boring. Okay, well, you're going for a beer then. I know you like doing that, so you can't say, I oh, don't do that anymore. I'd like, so the people that I admire, like Richard Branson, Duncan Bannatyne, yeah. and probably SpongeBob. So <laughs> the reason behind that rationale there is Richard Branson is very eccentric and very yeah. creative and has done some really creative campaigns. If you look at his stuff. Yeah, oh, really yeah, similar. yeah, of course, yeah. Um, Duncan Bannatyne, he's a businessman, made it, smashed it, and he's punched his he punched his first like his officer off a jetty when he was in the navy to because someone dared him to do it right he was like dared to smack him so he pushed him in the water and then he got put in the prison and SpongeBob because I was watching I it this morning <laughs> no and and he again, where were you watching it this he morning he just floats around because he just floats around and um and just does whatever he wants to do and doesn't care what anyone else thinks so I think the three together would be amazing do you know what I think. Like we got Richard Bannatyne, uh, Richard Bannatyne, Richard Branson, sorry, come up with really creative ideas. Duncan Bannatyne, who's very successful again, talks business, but would also not take any shit. And then SpongeBob, come up with the most really random ideas. So I think I, the three. I thought the guy that you reached out to was going to be, um, what was his name? You sent him an email and you didn't think you'd get a reply, and then he responded. <laughs> you can't remember his name either. That's terrible. Um, um, but yeah, it was you know. Years ago now, though. Yeah, yeah, years and years and years ago, but you sent him like an email and um, like about being an entrepreneur, and then he sent this really nice video message back to you. I thought he was going to be in, but SpongeBob got the nod over him. I, want, I always want to say Simon, but it's not Simon. It's really bad. I forgot his name. But the point is, yeah, he yeah. was like. But the thing is, so I reached out to him when I was twenty-two. The, the, the thing is, I've already taken what his advice was. I run with it. I'm not going to keep going back for the same advice. You met him yet? No, he invited me to go meet him. Yeah. Seven years later, he'd seen that I'd taken that knowledge and that advice, those books that he recommended, and I'd gone and done something with it. Um, that's quite rare. We spoke about it on the podcast, didn't we? And then did he reach out to you after? Yeah, yeah, that was because of the podcast, and I shared that yeah that story. Um, and then it was interesting to reach out, but again, but like I don't really ever look. I try not to look back. Maybe like, SpongeBob's going to reach out to you now. Then <laughs> <laughs> if he reached out last time. <laughs> what? So Spon- I reckon out the three, your best chance is SpongeBob. Well, I've tried to uh, speak to Duncan Banner time before. I asked him a question and he responded saying, you're going to have to buy the book to find out. <laughs> so I had to buy the book and I did find out. Um, I've never tried to reach out to Richard Branson, but I imagine everyone else does. So he invited point? me to follow his thing on LinkedIn and I was like, I'm I'm going to say that wasn't him, but in my head, he's personally invited me. Yeah, I think I think people yeah. like that are just genius. Because like, you have to really, I'm, it's not a sponge, but I'm not talking about now. But the, the two business guys, like to have the vision, so to be able to look ahead and go, right, I want to be there what steps am I going to have to take to get there? How can I be different to everyone else along the way? And I always say this thing, like people are called crazy. People are sort of belittled and said they're stupid until they really yeah. make millions or even billions. And then they're called geniuses and eccentric. Elon Musk. Yeah. It's like, an example. Like people would love to slate whatever you're doing. And then yeah. when the proof is in the pudding, you go, well, I did this. These mm. are the actions I took. These are the things that you also piss out of. And now I'm here. 
um, then they go, oh, you're eccentric. I, so yeah, like, of course. I'm trying to think of an example. Like, if I wanted to dress like a rabbit and run around with my wang out in London and say, I'm a bunny, I'm a bunny, people would go, he's mental, lock him up. If Richard Branson did it, it'd be called some sort of publicity stunt and he'd be like, oh, he's just eccentric. And I want to get to that point where you can run around with your wang out, dress as a bunny, saying, I'm a bunny, I'm a bunny. And people won't bat an eyelid yeah, because they go, oh, it's just Lewis. Just being Lewis. An example would be, uh, not Tom Hanks. Who's the other actor? There's an actor in America that just does really random stuff. He's the guy off Groundhog Day. What's his name? Yeah, Google it. This is relevant. Doesn't sound very relevant, but Groundhog <laughs> Day. I'm a bunny. I'm a bunny. Um, He's called Bill Murray. Okay, I don't know. Bill Murray does the most random crap. He yeah. walked into a park in New York and just started singing. Yeah. Uh, busking for no reason. Now he's obviously like a really well known actor. He's obviously older now. I'm 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 guessing he started to go a bit like crazy, but yeah. he just does the most crazy things, right? The most and the most out there things. And now if he'd done that as he was just like a normal old guy, people would go, He's mental. Yeah. But because he's Bill Murray and he's had this really long career and he's respected and he's got all this cash and people like aspire to to get there, he's just seen as eccentric. I want to be that loaded that no matter how ridiculous whatever I do is I'm like joking it's not about being rich it's just like I want to get there to a point yeah. where everyone goes no matter what I do it's not like an airpod thing people will go oh he's just eccentric that's crazy like it's not like oh he's an idiot what, an, what a moron rah, rah, rah. Yeah, yeah. it's like oh that's very creative and cool and, and whatever um, you think you're getting there because I mean no, whack, whacking yourself no on, a, on a billboard and some people would say oh that's just Lewis no yeah no people that know me would say that but like I'm saying that yeah. in like Are you two or three everyone? years yeah. Not even, I don't want them to know me personally. I'd rather them just know it's hustle. But like, if someone saw me doing something, like they would go, oh, he, he, it's, it's, he must be doing something for something. It's not just like, oh, what an idiot. Yeah, of course. Or people actually understand the, the background behind it. I'm just doing whatever, whatever I'm doing with hustle, I'm just being different to everyone else. I'm looking at what everyone else is doing and going, right, you're all doing this. I'm going to go do this. Yeah. Because how, how can I build a business and be successful if I'm doing the same as everyone else? It's just not feasible. It's just not possible. It's pointless. It's a fruitless endeavor. Yeah. Especially when you get a lot of these young ones out at university now going, I'm going to start an agency. Or they're being told at Hustlers University, you can make money by marketing. Like They have no clue, no knowledge, or, or no actual understanding of marketing, yet they're mm. out there trying to charge people money for services like social media management, which is yeah. great. You can Anyone can post a picture. However... Do you understand what you're doing behind that? Like, what's the what's the rationale behind it? What's the what principles are you tying it to? Where in the marketing mix is it sitting, and how is that going to help someone on a, on a buyer journey? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's no logic applied to it. Um. Yeah, they're doing it. So if everyone else is just, if it's becoming it's not not saturated, but it's getting hoarded by people that are doing the same crap. Then how, why would I want to be a part of that? I'd rather just go and do something I enjoy. No, I agree. Joe, you know I'm going to end this on. I've just remembered what my favorite bit of content is that you've ever done, but we're not going to talk about it. I'm going to wait if someone goes and watches it. Is your old travel vlogs when you were abroad? I thought you were going to say the dildo on the head. Oh, I didn't even mention that. <laughs> oh, we'll, quick, we'll quickly say it because I know Kai's got to shoot in a minute. But we were supposed to do a um, talk at a college slash school. I'm not going to say which one. And um, they said, oh, do some background on Harry and Lewis, you know, over front of that. Came back from me, all clean on social media, all good. I then had a call, said, oh, so we, we've got an issue. And I was like, oh, okay, thinking, like, what's what's happened? Oh, we've just, uh, a student's just printed off a photo of Lewis with a dildo on his head. Um, and the, you know, we don't want the parents, what they're going to think and everything like that. So we're going to have to cancel the talk. Well, no, they actually said, um, cancel you, but they wanted me to still go. And I said, no, like we agreed we'd do it together. So I'm not going to go and, and everything like that. And yeah. I pretended, I pretended to be a unicorn. That's what I was doing <laughs> at the time. Um, it was actually for a genuine piece of content. But yeah. Or, the, thing, the thing is, people, uh, this is the thing with disruptive marketing and being different is people are willing to go, oh yeah, like I want to be crazy. It's just, it, it really annoyed me because like I've, I've got a criminal record that's absolutely clean. I'm, I've, you know, I've got all the, the necessary checks, and checks in place. Yeah, like I know that I have no real issues, but it's like, if you don't understand what I do, you look at it and you'd be like, he's mental. This is what I mean by like, I want people to know, oh, that he must have been for something. It's not just like, he's absolute fruitcake. He's got a dildo on his head. We can't have him in school. Yeah. You, you'd much rather. It is It is a funny photo. And I mean, I haven't got it here, but <laughs> it like, because you are proper leaning up and it's just stuck on your head. Yeah. It was part of it. We were filming that day. But the point is, um, 
Yeah, like this it goes is a, back to your point about understanding, and then when it when they see, oh, that's Lewis. That's I need, I need, I need people not to get it because if everyone got it, I wouldn't have any. It'd just be swallowed up. Everyone to start doing the stuff I'm doing. I need to have people not get it, and people not be willing to touch it. And people, uh, one guy today shared a video, a, a, a post about Lewis Capaldi, and he and I said to him, "Oh, you guys should do some disruptive marks and like that." And he went, oh, "I can't." My boss said I shouldn't have even shared that picture of Lewis Capaldi's billboard today. I was like, "Why?" Yeah, some people are really, really precious about it. Like, um. Some people that I know, they get in trouble for liking our LinkedIn posts when they're a bit funny and stuff, and their boss tells them off for it. It's, I think it's insane, but as long as people like that exist, I have a job, but as soon as everyone starts, I, I need that. Yeah, exactly. No, no, definitely. No, thanks for driving down. No worries. Thanks for coming on. Off to London now. Oh, God. To see the Queen. No, no, to see the Queen's thinking. Oh, fine. I, I was thinking, I can't believe you just said that. No, it's like pay respects to the... Yeah, you're actually going to go. I'm, my mum went yesterday. I think I am going to go. My mum went yesterday. Not like now, but it'll be this evening. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on again. That's been. I've missed you. I like that. <laughs> the business spaces, but we, we got there. Yeah.